Welcome back now to Primetime Sports Friday. Now, the family of deceased former national youth basketball player Marco Mishdona is still in limbo more than three months after his death. Dona's mother says authorities have been uncooperative as she seeks to bury her son to finally bring closure in what has been a painful ordeal. One pathologist is saying one thing and a second one is saying another thing. So that is where our grosses are. The unfortunate plight of Michelle Nunes, mother of deceased former national youth basketballer Marco Mish Dona. Dona, who was last seen alive on May 16, was found dead on May 18 in his hometown of Portmore St. Catherine. But Dona's burial, which was originally scheduled for July 20, had to be postponed to August 31 after a discrepancy between the findings of the government pathologist and the family's private pathologist. The first autopsy says that, um, that he committed suicide, he hung himself. The second one is saying homicide. We have not received anything in black and white. And if you know the government of Jamaica, once we don't have black and white, it's not relevant. So we are not getting any, the second person, the second pathologist is saying that he needs a report. He needs a report from the first one in order to write his own because he does not want to use a secondary report to override a, the, the secondary report to override the primary report. Nunes, who works as a human resource practitioner with the government of Jamaica, says the sequence of events after her son's death prompted the family to get an independent autopsy done. Okay, so we were not satisfied and um, based on the fact that the investigative officer was the only person that was allowed in that autopsy, I'm not too sure if that's, that is what, what's protocol in Jamaica, but um, when he came out and was talking, um, based on my profession, I thought that he was lying through his teeth and um, how can you make a statement to a family that is struggling to say that um, he would not recommend a second autopsy at this time because the two pathologists might work together against us and so I said, no, that sounds strange to me. She went further to say that private medical information about her deceased son also seemed to play a factor in the reaction she was getting from the police. And the fact that they found out that he had a bipolar, is bipolar and was on medication, he just stopped communicating. I remember at one point, um, the bank account, we suggested to him that check to see that um, he drew some money from the account and how much he drew. Um, he, he sent the information to the father and said he must use a contact at the bank to get the information. When I call the bank, the bank says the police must do it. You understand? So I think he was twisting us on his fingers. Nunes wants the cause of death amended before signing the police report but says she doesn't know how to get that process started. When we spoke to the investigative officer, he is saying that um, the, I was concerned to find out how would we initiate a conversation between both doctors. He says that he's in the dark just as a why I'm in the dark. So right now I want to find out where do we go from here. She has sought legal advice. Okay, so the lawyer has advised us, um, well he had written to the commissioner himself and um, he had advised us to get the burial order because without the burial order we cannot bury Marco. But um, he understand our feeling with the hanging being on that burial order. It's not, I don't think it is, it is fair for, for, for us to bury our son because we cannot struggle with him during life and then we're struggling with him through death. Nunes says the continued delay will only add more financial and emotional strain on the grieving family. Well, um, it, has been it has been a struggle for us because, um, as you said, it's costing us to get that body stored based on the, the decomposition of the body. And um, right now we are at loggerheads in terms of payment and it has been a struggle, a strong, strong struggle. And, you know, sometimes people judge people and say that we have money or that sort of thing, but it's not a matter of having money, but I just think that the right thing needs to be done and it needs to be done ASAP. Six foot nine inch donor who was a standout for Calabar High played for the national under-17 basketball team. He also played for the University of Tampa Spartans in the 2018-19 season before going on to play for the Miami-Dade Sharks while majoring in international business and marketing before returning home, where he suited up in last season's NBL for the Portmore Flames. He was 24 years old.